people, but the woman honks in her sleep. She sounds worse than me. Trust me, you were a dream cellmate compared to her. Seriously? It's a good thing Goosey Lucy is getting out next week because I am ready to press a snooze button if you get me meaning. Morning. Who's this? My new cellmate, top lady, Sally. Meet Marcia, Marcia, meet Sal. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. Hang on. I've seen your face somewhere. Well, that is quite possible, cos I did have quite a media profile at one time. I've got it. Didn't you clean out all those old days a few years back? Thank you. Yeah. Actually, Sal was the mayor of Weatherfield. Until I was framed and wrongly imprisoned. Mmm, politician, eh? My mistake. At least I was right about the con artist bit, though, eh? Face is abs. See ya. And if you change your mind about some Christmas cheer, you know which bell to ring. She's charming, isn't she? Yeah. She's also someone you don't want to get on the wrong side of. Marcia's got a lot of clout round here. What do you mean? She has all the best stuff. Best stuff being illicit drugs and alcohol, I presume. Yeah. They call her hairy godmother behind her back. She's not big into personal grooming. So that comment then about Christmas cheer, when she's offering to sort me out. Oh, relax, Sal. No way am I going back on the gear. Never in a million years. Anyway, enough about her nibs. What's the latest? Any idea how you're going to raise that money? <sighs> Looks like I'm going to have to sell the house. There's no other option. Mm. Are you kidding? How's Tim taking it? <sighs> I don't know. I've not spoken to him yet. But you're on it. Oh, yeah. I've arranged a phone call for later on. I just hope he understands. Well, of course he will. Like you said, it's not like you had a choice. Morning, love. Morning. So, how was your me night? You were Sparko when I came to bed. <laughs> Terrific. Very, uh, therapeutic. But I did have a slight accident. You call that slight? How did that happen? Well, if you must know, I, I, I slipped in the bath and my face hit the shower doodah. Can you see out of it properly? Honestly, I'm fine, Johnny. It, it looks worse than it is. Is it tender? I said, I am fine. But if you must insist on fussing, then I could murder a brew. Sure. No problem. One brew coming up. They're still saying, even though I'm 18 soon, that I need support to get this guardianship. <sighs> It's always going to be a long shot, love. But not like I'm way more mature than everyone else my age around here. Well, you are preaching to the choir now. I mean, I've got a job. I can give them a home. Why can't they see that being with the brother who loves them is way better than just being dumped with some strangers? I just wish there was something I could do. Do you really mean that? <laughs> of course I do. Well, because Claire did say that there was another option, but... I don't know, I just, just felt weird even bringing it up. Bringing what up? You supporting my application for the special guardianship order? Cos, uh, with you on board and my age, it's, it's not an issue. Special guardianship order? I'm, I'm lost. I mean, how, how would that even work? Well, basically, the, uh, the twins would come and live here with us, but it'd also give me something they call enhanced parental responsibility. And um, what happens after? Well, as soon as I'm 21, then I'll be able to properly adopt the twins. Then it's job done. Look, I know that this is a massive ask, but this is probably my only chance. Oh, so no pressure, then? Oh, this is why I didn't mention it. Just... just forget it, yeah. I'll find some other way. Except there isn't another way, is there? If I did this, and I mean if, where would that leave Abby when she came out of prison? I mean, and I'm no expert, but I'm guessing she couldn't live with us. Well, that's her problem. But it's not that simple. So you're saying you won't do it? No, I'm saying, before I can even get my head around this, I need to run it past Abby. No, no that is not up for discussion. You look like death warmed up. I must admit, I have felt better. So, uh, what are your plans today, then? Uh, another nap, uh, another fry-up, and then an afternoon of American pickers. <laughs> School. Uh, Brian Packham speaking. Oh, uh, morning, Melinda. 
Uh, oh, you know, holding up. Really? Hey, she's met with Phil. A meeting this evening was rather short notice. I, I, I suppose I could um, drop by uh, if you think it's necessary. Fine, I'll uh, see you at six then. Fantastic. Oh, we don't know what she wants yet. She wants to grovel, obviously. Maybe. There's no maybe about it, Brian. Listen, that video proves that you were right about Phil all along. It's an open and shut case. Trust me, mark my words. It's onwards and upwards. Yeah, my wife says that a conservatory elevates any home. Her words, not mine. I love. What's going on? This is the estate agent. It's a smashing space. Plenty of natural light. The colour combinations are very tasteful. You've obviously got an excellent eye. Oh, it's no to do with me when it comes to decor and whatnot. This is a Timothy Free zone. Wife calls the shots, does she? Always, yeah. Well, it surprises me she's not made an appearance. My hope is not allowed to buy a loaf of bread without me okay in it. Right, well, yeah, uh, sorry about that. She would have liked to have been here, but um, prison breaks are difficult to organise. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I best take a look see upstairs. Yeah, knock yourself out, love. Seriously? I told you I was putting the house on the market. Well, I didn't think you meant straight away. Well, don't shoot the messenger, kid. Where are we going to live? Don't know, rent, I suppose. Somewhere around here, though. I don't have to move college, do I? Just relax, Faye. I'll get you sorted, OK? Why don't you go have a lie down? Stop mithering. I was just a little headache. Morning! Morning. Flipping heck. What's the other bloke look like? You said it wasn't obvious. I said it was less obvious. No. No, I'm sorry. I don't understand. There are no ifs, buts or maybes. They are guilty. So what happened then? Uh, daft accident, so. Well, what kind of accident? <sighs> She slipped in the bath, whacked her face. What is this, 20 questions? Is that any better? Yeah, much. Oh, well, that is absolutely no consolation whatsoever. Right, thanks for nothing. <sighs> Sorry. Morning. Don't ask. Is there a problem? <sighs> Police can't hold Jim and Hannah. They're being released without charge. Oh, right. I'm really sorry. I mean, I want them punished, of course I do, but mainly, I just want them out of my life. Listen, they're not going to show the faces around here again, not after what they did. No. No chance. Besides, they have to get through me first. Look, it's obviously been a shock. Why don't you go home? The rest of us can manage. It'll be fine. No, seriously. Go home. Thanks, but no. I am not going to let that man stop me getting on with my life. He's ruined enough of it as it is. Oh, if it's not one thing, it's another, eh? You know, I think I might ask Robert for this evening off. What? On probably his busiest night of the year, yeah. Good luck with that one. OK. You need looking after. Right. First of all, I'm not an invalid. And secondly, you should care. Robert's been really good to you. And anyway, we could do with the tips, couldn't we? Mm. Yes, yeah, I suppose. Well, come on, will you cheer up? You heard the doctor. The baby's doing great. My white cell count is normal. It's not all doom and gloom. Mm. Obviously, December is a tricky month, sales-wise, but... We'll do our best, Mr Metcalf. Just get what you can, love. There's no real skin off my nose. Fair enough. I'll be in touch. Cheers. What's all this? This is your worst Christmas present ever. Anyway, I hope you're feeling strong, because you're going to be pulling plenty of pints for yours truly later. <laughs> Street cars, they've got their Christmas party. I intend to get absolutely shedded. Well, there's something to look forward to. Sale. You're a bit eager, aren't you? Well, Sally spoke, and who am I to argue? Yeah, but seriously, it's your home as well. Nah, not anymore, it's not. I've got no real attachment to this place. It's always been her gaff. I'm just a glorified lodger. That is not true. Well, it is. Well, no, it's not, actually. The lodger's harder to turf out. <laughs> so what's the plan for you and Faye? I don't know. Rent, I suppose. Somewhere local. 
Do it for it. Me? Hmm. Yeah, don't look so surprised you're in the same boat. Yeah, but I didn't want to presume. I don't be daft. Besides, if it was just me and Faye, we'd probably be living in a pigsty within a week. Uh, so it's a housekeeper you want, not a flat, mate. <laughs> Is that a no, then? Did I say that? Miss Sal. Don't you want to speak to her? Nah, probably say something I'll regret. Hello, Sal. So, how are you doing? Mm, up and down. I'm Sally. More down than up. You know she's having to sell a gaff. Uh, I didn't, actually. She's on the phone to Tim right now. Oh, and uh, speaking of difficult conversations, has Seb said anything about visiting me? Not yet. He, he's still really angry, love. The sooner he forgets about this adoption bobbins, the better. Well, I don't think that's going to happen right now. Then you have to talk some sense into him. Make him understand that how wrong it is for him and the twins. But he... he just doesn't see it that way. He's too young. I agree, it's just that... he thinks there might be another option. Um, I'm not with you. He's asked me to support his application for a special guardianship order. And you told him it was bonkers, right? Please tell me you said that. I told him I would discuss it with you. There's nothing to discuss. I'm not having my lad throw away the best years of his life. Abby. I'll just... Get out of his son! Get out of me! Fuming, Sal. I mean, surely he realises that selling up is the last resort. Yeah, well, I told him that, but as far as he's concerned, you're still making him and his daughter homeless. And it breaks my heart. I'm sure I'll calm down in a few days. Well, on the upside, the place is on the market. What, already? Yeah, I thought you'd be pleased. Full sale signs up and everything. Can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. Is the world's smallest violin bothering you? You know, it's very impolite to listen in on people's conversations. Do you know what else is impolite? Not to mention bad for your health. Keeping me waiting. So? I'm gonna have to go. Do you want me to give Tim a message? Just tell him I'm sorry. Ooh, you look handsome. How'd it go with Sal? Oh, fine, no dramas. She just wanted to see how the sale was going. You know, I'm not sure I can be bothered with this party. Oh, come on. The worst thing you can do is sit here and stew in your own juices. Oh. Come on, go and enjoy yourself. That is an order, mister. All right, all right. <clears throat> and if you want a good moan later, maybe I could join you after work. OK, sounds good. <sighs> you have to let it go. What happened to getting on with your life? Easier said than done. It just seems wrong that they're going to walk away scot-free. Is it all right if I knock off early? Yeah, of course. Hold up. Where are you going? Police station. I want some answers. You're wasting your time. We'll see about that. You want to tag along? It's all right by me. Let's come look after herself. I'll have it your way. Don't say I didn't offer. Oh, he was so flat earlier. He'll bounce back. Not without help. I just wish I could build his confidence. Hey, this mate of mine, she had the same problem with her fella. She had to take it to the next level. What did she do? Well, she booked him on this SAS course. Proper hardcore it were. Did it work? Well, he certainly manned up. A week later, he runs off with the instructor, Big Dave. Oh, God. God. If I didn't have bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. Why? What's happened? Father Christmas has only cancelled on me. He claimed to have been stuck in traffic, where it's obvious he was three sheets to the wind. I don't suppose. Of course, my love. Cometh the hour, cometh the man, and all that. Actually, yeah. Could I throw another name into the hat? Oh, but by all means. But I've already agreed. Who is it? My Brian. 
Brian, look, I don't mean to be rude, but do you remember what happened last Christmas? Oh, think of that as a learning experience. Honestly, it's just the pick-me-up he needs. Please, please, Yasmin, give him another chance. Well, if you think it'll help. Brian, it is then. Oh. <laughs> Four talking birds, three French men. Calling birds French hens. Two turtle doves and a partridge in a spare tree. Don't correct it, we'll never get to the end. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. What's the next bit? I don't know, why don't we just call it quits? Huh? You, you told me to cheer myself up, and I'm cheering myself up. Six geese are laying. Six geese are laying. Oh, my God, this is so depressing. <sighs> All right, eh? Is this a private party or can anyone join private in? Private party. Steve. Do you like champagne? Oh, yeah, I love champagne. Hey, champagne and none of that cheap rubbish. We don't sell rubbish. Have so. four glasses and all, pal. Bet this is really exciting for you, isn't it, Eileen? Bet it's the first time you've ever had proper champagne. Uh, I have, as it happens. I've always thought the bottle had a nice heft to it, you know, for when you want to smack someone round the head for being annoying. On the first day of... Right, that's enough. You're disturbing the other customers oh, now. Oh, shut up, you miserable git. He's allowed to have some fun. His cheating wife's banged up and now she wants the roof from over his head. Can we just have a peaceful drink, please? Exactly. It's been a rotten year all round. Heaven, something, oh, something. Do you <laughs> have any idea how annoying you are? All right, calm down. You're looking at the nearly homeless. Yeah, he's right, Daniel. Everybody handles stress in different ways. Some get splattered. Others push relatives down the stairs. Shall we adjourn to a quiet table? Yeah. I'm sure she's all right. Sorry? Liz, I did say you could go with her. I'm not doing this, Jenny. Doing what? What must I change? I'm just popping to the shop. I'll be long. Well, some people are a doddle to buy for. Alia, for instance, you can't go wrong with vouchers or shiny lip gloss. But Jeff, why don't you get him a new rabbit? Or one of them cape things? <laughs> he already thinks he's God's gift. I don't want him thinking he's Superman as well. <laughs> Have you got any idea what he's getting for you? Something very inexpensive, I hope. Personally, I'd prefer if he made a donation to charity. I mean, Christmas is for the children. Totally agree. Let me guess. You've been talking about me. See what I mean? Evening, all. Evening, Squire. <clears throat> what are you having? Oh, just an orange juice. Ah, oh, I've got a meeting with my head later, and uh, I don't think you should appreciate it if I turned up smelling the booze after yesterday. So, what's new? I have a favour to ask you. Or rather, your community does. We need you to reprise your role as Father Christmas. The other Santa's a no-show. She's desperate. Uh, Just filling him in. But last year... But it's forgotten. Tonight is a clean slate. Uh, that's very magnanimous of you, but uh, I'm just not certain I'm in the right headspace to deal with kids right now. I totally understand, mate. Looks like we're going back to Plan G. All the more reason for you to get back on the horse. You were born to wear the red suit, just like you were born to teach. I said you put it that way. How can I say no? <gasps> Thank you, Brian. You are a prince among men. <laughs> What's that you got there? Nothing. Don't look like nothing. Looks like one of them apps what you use to track someone's phone. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just something me and Johnny do. And since when? Here's a novel idea. Why don't you try doing some work instead of sticking your beak into my business? You are, boss. Oi. Perfect timing. You what? Oh, I have to say, look, we're fitter in real life. <laughs> Sorry, do I know you? Well, not yet, but give it half an hour. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> 
somebody put you up to this? Because I'm telling you right now, I'm not in the mood to play silly beggar. It's all right, keep your hair on. You're the one that posted, not me. Posted? That's you, right? So, take it, um, Abby's not on board, then. Slight understatement, though you probably think I'm mad even considering it. Well, I think you're taking a lot on, but I think you'd be brilliant with them kids. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I agree with him. Oh, I thought you were away with the fairies. Oh, oh look, it lives. No, uh, I was just having a bit of a think about stuff. Well, I've told you about that. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that my life is really pants. Oh, um... Why don't we have another song? You know, I'm a man in my prime, me, and I'm wasting away. Yeah, prime might be pushing it. Well, enough is enough. Where are you going? To live the dream. Go with him. Watch ya. Uh, hello? I don't suppose you're a doctor, are you, love? Because I broke my leg falling for you. Sorry, it's a little bit over-refreshed. Come on, let's go. Unbelievable. Shut up, in here. Don't listen to him, love. I'm not drunk. I'm just lacking in vitamin U. Do you get it, vitamin U? <sighs> Come on, Steve. You need to sort him out. I know. Come on. You married, Ember. You a fat lot of good it's done me. Apart from being out on my ear and up the creek without a paddle. She did the dirty on me, did Sally, and I'm a good man. It's about time this good man started being a bit naughty. Coronation Street continues in half an hour 